This is an introductory video on autoclave curing process for aerospace composite parts. An autoclave is essentially a two-in-one equipment. It is an oven as well as a pressure vessel. It is an oven which means it can apply heat to cure thermoset and soften thermoplastic resins. It is a pressure vessel which means it can apply pressure to consolidate the composite plies which hopefully will result in low void content and high quality composite parts. This video is primarily applicable to the autoclave curing of thermoset prepreg such as carbon fiber epoxy prepregs. A majority of aerospace grade composite parts today are made using vacuum bagging technique and cured in an autoclave. Here I'm showing a vacuum bag that is ready to be loaded into an autoclave. Thermocouple wires are usually in contact with the composite parts to measure the part temperature during the cure process. There are usually at least two vacuum ports in each vacuum bag, one for pulling vacuum and one for measuring vacuum. Let's take a look at the interior of an autoclave chamber. The interior of the chamber has many thermocouple, vacuum source and vacuum transducer ports. Larger autoclaves can have up to several hundred ports. Each thermocouple port and vacuum transducer port has a unique number. This uniquely numbered port should be traceable to the vacuum bag and parts so that the autoclave computer system can identify the part temperature and vacuum bag during the cure cycle. In the event that there is a vacuum bag leak, the autoclave operator should know exactly which bag leaked so that the part can be segregated for material review board disposition. After all the vacuum bags are loaded into the autoclave and their leak rates are checked, it is time to close the autoclave door. Smaller autoclaves such as this one usually has a door that swings open. Larger autoclaves may have doors that slide open. The doors are usually secured in place with a locking ring. Let's look at a typical autoclave instrument panel. It usually consists of a temperature controller pressure controller, and vacuum controller. Most modern autoclaves are controlled using a computer system, so these electronic controllers are usually used as a backup only. For example, in the event of a computer failure. When the autoclave computer system fails, the chart recorder should turn on automatically to begin recording necessary data. This is a picture of the autoclave control panel. The switches for hydraulic power supply which opens and closes the door as well as the major equipment failure alarm lights are located here. The pneumatic valve controllers for vacuum source and vacuum transducers are also located here. A cure cycle chart such as this one is usually specified in the process specification. The cure cycle will usually begin at room temperature with a full vacuum. It is common to vent the vacuum back to the atmosphere after the autoclave has reached a certain pressure and temperature level. In addition to a cure cycle chart, additional requirements are usually specified in the process specification. Initial vacuum back leak rate here is specified at no more than 5 inches of mercury in 5 minutes. Most requirements such as temperature heating rate, pressure application rate, soak temperature, and soak time are usually specified with tolerance limits. The time in which vacuum bags must be vented to the atmosphere is usually specified as a function of temperature and or pressure. Hold time usually starts when the lagging thermocouple reaches the lower limit of the cure temperature. The cool down rate as well as the temperature at which the autoclave pressure may be vented are usually specified also. These additional requirements along with the cure cycle chart form the engineering requirements. Deviations from these requirements will require MRB disposition. This is a screenshot of the autoclave computer. The screen shows real-time measurement of the autoclave temperature, autoclave pressure and source vacuum level. At this instant, the vacuum has been vented to the atmosphere. The lower portion of the screen is showing the part temperature and part vacuum. I have one thermocouple wire and one vacuum transducer port only in this cure cycle. If there were more parts in the autoclave, the screen can be adjusted to show all the measurements. As you probably have noticed, the screen is showing a major vacuum leak. 
pressure has built up inside the bag to almost equal the autoclave pressure and the control system has triggered an alarm. The chart on the upper right hand side shows the measurements as a function of time for the kill cycle. At this instant, as you can see, we are still in a temperature ramp up phase. This is a plot of a good and successful kill cycle. The lower portion of the screen shows the autoclave pressure and source and part vacuum levels. The source and part vacuum lines overlap each other, which is a sign there was no major vacuum back leak. The center of the screen shows the temperature measurements. The autoclave vessel temperature, which is the air temperature in the autoclave, leads the part temperature in the ramp phase, which is expected because the parts have thermal mass and will always lag the air temperature. The air temperature overshot a little in the end of the ramp which was done intentionally and automatically by the autoclave control system so that the pots can reach cure temperature quicker. Sometimes at the end of the ramp, the pot temperatures may overshoot also. This could be intentional or unintentional. Minor overshoot within the tolerance of the soak temperature could be intentional because the autoclave is trying to bring lagging thermocouples up to cure temperature. Major overshoot beyond the soak temperature tolerance limits could be a sign of autoclave tuning problem. Or, if you have very thick parts or reactive resins, it could be a sign of major exothermic reaction in the part. In this case, since there is no overshoot, we can conclude that there is no major exothermic reaction.